Have you ever tried to punch someone in a dream just to feel like you're moving in slow motion? Well, there's a good reason for that because the way your brain constructs a dream is the same way a blind person would bake a cake. Step one is to prep the kitchen. Now, most people have heard of REM sleep before, but if you haven't, all it is is the deepest stage of sleep that your body goes into. Quite literally the place where dreams are made of. And it's also the place that allows your body to paralyze itself for safety. It does this by cutting off the signals from your brain, where the dreams are happening, to your muscles. So even if the brain wanted to tell your muscles what to do, it couldn't. And this is a good thing, by the way, because if this didn't happen, you'd look like this at 3 a.m. But now the kitchen is prepped. So it's time to collect the ingredients for our massive tasty dream cake. Dreams are built on three things. The first is fragments of your memory, old and new, stuff that you have just locked up away in there. Then we have whatever you were imagining before you went to sleep. The stuff that was on your mind, the picture you were painting up there. And the third, which a lot of people seem to forget, is emotions. Think about it like this. You've got the tone of the dream, which is the emotion you were feeling. Then you've got the world building, you know, everything you can see, touch, feel, smell. And of course, the subject, or you. And of course, since we're talking about you punching in this dream, we're going to focus on the imagination. Close your eyes right now and try and picture exactly how throwing a punch feels. What would you describe it as? Maybe the feeling of wind flowing past your arm. Maybe it's the connection your fist makes with somebody. Or maybe you would describe it as millions of neurons firing almost instantaneously, defining the displacement and velocity of your arm. That's probably just me though. The point here is your brain is having to simulate exactly what it would feel like, or look like, or sound like, because your senses aren't doing anything. They're not providing any data. Your brain is very good at processing data. It takes the data from your eyes, from your ears, from your nose, and then it combines them all to give you a perception in real time of what reality is. If you take all of those away, then what are you left with apart from memories? Think about it for a second, because when you're dreaming, there's no senses providing your brain with any information. So all the things that you see, that you touch, that you hear, that you feel, they're all fake. It's AI generation before we even knew what the term AI meant. And just like AI generation or a blind baker trying to read a recipe book, it's not all that accurate because at the end of the day, it's just making shit up. The most important step in making a cake is mixing all of the ingredients in a big stupid bowl. It's time for some dynamics on exactly how your brain processes a normal punch. So do it, literally right now. Punch the air in front of you and feel exactly how it feels. All of the neurons firing in complete harmony. It's beautiful, it's amazing. Wow, God, you're so strong. Oh. What just happened there is when you went to throw the punch, your brain sent a signal to the muscles in your arm saying, oi, it's time to move. And then after that movement, what happens is your arm will provide a feedback form of sorts to the brain. Kind of like a passive aggressive email that you send to your boss after you're told to follow up on something. Hi there brain, as per your command, we have moved in this direction by this much with this much force. Job done mate, kind regards, finger three. This is what we would call a feedback loop. Your brain has sent out instructions and your body has sent back a report saying exactly what happened in the finest amount of detail. But what if the body can't send that feedback form back because, you know, the muscles are paralyzed? Did you forget about that? Well, then the brain has to fill in the gaps itself. You'll find that it's the same no matter what complex motor function you're trying to perform in a dream, whether that be punching, running, jumping, literally anything physical. Your brain is trying to send signals to the muscles and then the muscles are going, uh, hey mate, we aren't moving. So the brain's like, fucking hell, this must be hard, this. This is a lot of effort that we're putting in. So what your brain portrays to you is you trying extremely hard to move through this syrup-like consistency in the air. Hence why it's extremely hard for you to run, jump, 
or punch in dreams. But not in all dreams. So can you fix it? If it only works in some dreams, then surely you'd be able to train yourself to run, jump, swim, and punch like a complete athlete in your brain. Good news for you, buddy. It is absolutely possible to do that. It's also possible to learn how to fly or run at supersonic speeds. Just know that it's probably easier to do it in person than it is to do it in your head. Lucid dreaming. The phenomena where you realize you are dreaming while still in the dream, giving you complete control over said dream and what happens in it. This is something a lot of people consider to be fake, like it just isn't real and people are making it up. It's also something people think is incredibly rare and to be fair, it kind of is to most people. But it's also a thing you can genuinely learn how to do more often. There is plenty of tutorials on YouTube, just like there is for everything nowadays. So if you wanna go and watch one of those, absolutely go ahead. But why does lucid dreaming allow you to train your brain? Because just like every other dream, your brain is still just making shit up as it goes along. So what's changed here? You see, with lucid dreaming, we've brought in consciousness to the game. Or in other words, the prefrontal cortex, which is the logic and planning center of the brain. It can override the feedback that your brain gets from the muscles. Instead of just sitting there and accepting that you can only run at the speed of a snail, your brain kind of goes, hang on a second, this isn't right at all. And because your brain is quite literally in complete control of the dream, it just speeds you up, kind of like changing the source code of the dream. It can make you run as fast as you want, or jump as high as you want, or punch as hard as you want, even fly, even though you've never actually experienced that in real life. The brain can be a very powerful simulator when you train it not to rely on external factors. It's extremely strong. Now watch this longer video I made because uh, it's longer and it gives me more watch time and it's about a whole new universe. So you should watch that. Thank you.